Where's the yeah. gas? It's a gas. It's yeah. full of gas. Yeah. 53. Okay. There's some Let's just right hydrate. Here. Let's just open it. Cut, cut, cut quickly. Let's wait. On board Scripps' research vessel Melville, a science team led by Professor Miriam Kastner excitedly cuts the end off a core sample hauled up from the seafloor 1,700 feet below. It's hard to imagine their excitement is about mud. But these muds, specifically seafloor sediments, hold clues to chemical processes which could potentially fuel future energy needs and may play a major role in global warming. The story begins in Northern California's Humboldt County, near Eureka, where the Eel River cuts across the coastal landscape. Humboldt is a richly forested region of mountain ranges that have been formed by the actions of the San Andreas and other local faults. Its geologic history is revealed along river-cut canyons, mostly made up of soft rocks that were once under ancient oceans. Over eons, the rivers in Humboldt County have transported their muds and sands to the coastline where thick accumulations have formed expansive mud flats. The sediments are dark because they are rich in organic materials, which would normally indicate a likely source of crude oil, but no significant oil fields have been found. Yet, as these sediments move from the land into the ocean, they carry with them materials and compounds that will much later produce another form of gas in the seafloor. Fifty miles offshore, the Point Lobos from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute joins research vessel Melville on an expedition to sample Eel River Basin sediments. The sloping mountain terrain on land continues underwater, but the deep sea conditions produce some interesting results. This whole ridge is venting. Today they found a new vent site here. Professor Kastner refers to sea floor vents where methane bubbles into the water. This methane is released by bacteria as they consume the organic material in the sediments. It could be used as fuel, but extracting it is not economical with current technologies. Of more immediate concern to Kastner and other Earth scientists is how much of the methane is rising into the ocean surface and escaping into the atmosphere, where it joins other greenhouse gases that are heating our planet and changing climate patterns. Some of the sediment samples taken this day are canned, labeled, and stored in a freezer for detailed analysis in the lab back at Scripps. In her stateroom, Professor Kastner studies seafloor bathymetry maps while planning the next day's collections. On deck, a water sampling instrument is brought on board. Seawater is collected by this device at various distances away from the seafloor vents which reveals details of how methane and other compounds are distributed and ultimately escape into the atmosphere. A chemistry lab has been set up inside Melville where scientists and graduate students prepare samples for analytical analysis. Staff research associate Gretchen Robertson explains some of the processing. I have to filter these waters so that get out all the particulate and the carbonates and the corams and everything that would be suspended in the water. Another procedure is conducted by researcher Adina Payton. What I'm doing here is measuring the ammonia concentration. We added some seawater from different depths to each of these vials and a few reagents. We put it in the spectrum photometer and the amount of absorption is proportional to the ammonia concentration in these samples. On deck, another core has been recovered from the seafloor, and indications are that there may be something of interest inside. There's something here. That's a, that's a carbonate. It's a carbonate piece. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We take it out. Oh, that's a pretty big chunk. They have found a carbonate, an indication the seafloor here is permeated with methane <laughs> hydrates. Do you think it is the carbonate? It's a yeah, carbonate. It's carbonate. Yeah. It's a carbonate. Kastner summarizes the week-long expedition. We achieved a lot uh, scientifically. We got excellent uh, 
venting sites, we sampled the gases, we got very good water quantum data and uh, very good cores, including one core which was affected by these gas hydrates. On the basis of these results, we should be able to plan a larger program in the future and get some ideas how much gas hydrates we have in this region. Apparently, there should be a lot. And then we can predict the rates of uh, decomposition and if the global warming will go on, what's the effect on the decomposition of the gas hydrates in this Northern California field is going to be. From the river basins off Northern California, to New Jersey, Japan, and Costa Rica, there are enormous deposits of methane hydrates. But as long as gas and oil are relatively cheap, they will remain untapped. In the meantime, scientists will continue their investigations, for they suspect that as Earth warms, even greater amounts of seafloor and methane will be released, and the result could mean even faster global warming.